hope you're excited about what's coming on August the 30th, because that's the day where you can start remembering what it's like to be a child. Because the truth is we've all forgotten a lot of what it's like to be a child, but there's so much research and so much case study out there that can help us understand why kids do some of the strange things that they do, like why they wait till the last minute to memorize their recital piece, or why they lose interest in piano as they grow older. And it's not always just because they don't have enough time. Why they didn't practice that one piece last week, or why they keep working on the same piece over and over again without much progress. Kids are complex creatures, and it's really easy to get frustrated with them, sometimes to get angry, and it's especially easy to just complain about them. Another thing that it's easy to do, though, is to get kind of sidetracked and to try to go searching for that perfect solution to what we think is the problem. We look for articles and ideas and gimmicks and and motivation to try to fix some issue that we think they have when really they're just behaving like children. And when we understand and what it's like to be a child, we can really make a difference in how we present things to them from the beginning where they don't have some of these issues in the end. I think that when you understand what it's like to be a child, when you learn the five characteristics that we tend to forget, I think that it's easy to help our students to progress more quickly and to be more engaged and excited about piano lessons. But children are not as mysterious as we think they are. And when you learn these five characteristics that we tend to have forgotten and you learn ways to apply them, I think that you'll find that your students progress more quickly, they're more excited about piano and that they can excel in piano in ways that they couldn't before. When you learn these five characteristics, I believe you'll be more excited about how you can engage students in your lessons. You might even be like one of the teachers who said, this has helped me understand my grandchildren better. So mark your calendars for August the 30th because that's when we're going to be releasing the Have You Forgotten What It's Like to Be a Child? Five Characteristics That We've Forgotten and How We Can Apply Them. We're going to be releasing this as an online workshop that you can purchase and you can view individually in the privacy of your own home several times over. You can watch it within hours of purchasing it. You can watch it several weeks later. You can watch it again. You don't have to be at the right place at the right time with the right set of speakers like you do on a webinar, you can easily just um, log in when it's convenient for you. This will be a professionally recorded workshop and it is going to be super engaging. It's going to be super useful and super affordable as well. But this video is not just telling you about the upcoming workshop on August the 30th. I want to give you something that's immediately useful and something that's free, something that's different that's in the workshop, but that's related to those things that are in the workshop. If you haven't watched video one, please go and do that now because that'll give you another teaching tip that you can also use. When I tell you this characteristic, I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna say, well, Wendy, I already know that. And I know that you already know that. But I think the problem is that we don't apply this particular characteristic. We don't think about how to apply. We don't take the time to actually think about what it means when we are teaching children. So let me share the characteristic with you that you already know. It is this. Children tune out when they're not engaged, and that happens fast. Now let me give you an example of how we already know this, but we don't apply it. Imagine for a moment that you're teaching sharps and flats to an elementary student. So I might approach them and say, okay, Johnny, I'm going to teach you about sharps and flats today. Woohoo, exciting, right? Um, and so I'll say, you know, a sharp means, this is a sharp, and I'll point to it on the, on the music, and a sharp means to move up a half of a step. And so the sound moves up a half of a step. And a flat means to move down a half of a step. And sometimes that can be up to a black key, and but sometimes it can be up to a white key. So let's do that a little bit on the piano. And I might think I'm a really good teacher to go ahead and get him involved and engaged and play an F and then play an F sharp, Johnny, and then play an E and an E flat, Johnny. And I might think I'm really engaging him. 
And yes, I am involving him in that process. And yes, to some extent, like we talked about in video one, I am relating it to something he's familiar with because I'm talking about Fs, which he already knows, and I'm talking about white keys and black keys. But just as you learned in that first video, that's not always the most effective way. When you relate it to something that they're more familiar with in life, not just some other musical concept, it is much more effective. So can you imagine though how, you know, that student might learn the Fs, or excuse me, that sharps and flats exist and they might remember it and it's an okay presentation. There's nothing wrong with the way that I presented it. But visualize this with me for a moment. What if I say, Johnny, today we're gonna learn about sharps and flats and naturals. I want you to go to the stairs. Well, Johnny might just look at me kind of strangely, but I'll say, yeah, go to the stairs. There's a little blue dot on the stairs. I want you to go stand on that little blue dot. And then I may, might say to Johnny, okay, there are three things you're gonna learn today. You're gonna learn about sharps. Sharps means you're going to move up. Naturals means you're going to go back to your home base, which is that blue little circle, and flats mean you're going to move down. So I want you to listen to me as I show you and tell you sharp, flat, or natural, and you move in the direction that it's supposed to be, all right? And so Johnny says, yeah, and so I'll say sharp, and then I'll say natural, and then I'll say flat, and then I'll say sharp. And then I'll say natural and I'll go back and forth with these kinds of things and show him and go faster and faster. He will have a wonderful time learning about sharps and flats and naturals. Now, can you imagine how much more he's going to remember what these things mean and what they look like if we actually practice it doing something that engages him, not just engaging his mind, but engaging his body. Then we're going to transfer that to the piano and we're going to use something like the elephant cards that I'm going to give you today. So for example, I would say, okay, Johnny, we're going to put our elephants at the bottom of the piano and we're going to shuffle the flat cards and when we, excuse me, the sharp cards. And so we shuffle the sharp cards and when we shuffle the sharp cards, we'll put them on the bench and we'll say, okay, Johnny, draw a sharp and he draws B sharp. So his elephant gets to move up to a B sharp. Now he's transferring what he physically learned in his body, he's transferring it to the keyboard. And then I go and I say, okay, I got an A sharp, so I move to an A sharp. And of course I'm behind you now, so I'm gonna catch up. And then we move and we just do that same thing. You can do the same thing starting at the top of the keyboard and using the flat elephant cards. You can do the same thing just teaching white key note names. There's tons of things that you can do with these particular, these particular particular cards, but can you imagine how much more engaged that student is and therefore how much better they are going to learn and remember sharps, flats, and naturals? So much more effective than actually just sitting there and lecturing the student and then asking them to do minimal amount of involvement by playing those sharps and flats and naturals. So scroll down on this blog post so that you can get the free elephant flashcards. If you're not on the blog post, please go to composecreate.com slash blog and you will see it. You will get big elephant cards, you'll get small elephant cards, you'll get your sharp, your flat, and your natural, and you can begin to teach that in a more engaging way with your students. Then stay tuned for August the 30th where you'll get an email where you can sign up for the sale for the workshop that will teach you the five characteristics that you've forgotten about being a child. Child.